How goes it everyone? I got another fun video for you. It's another Falcon release. This is a uh, Trails of Cold St or Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. This is technically part one and two. Uh, the way that this came, you have this nice super foily shiny ass box. And uh, this was basically how the first game came. You got a decent art book. Which I won't uh, spend too much time on because, you know, spoilers and all that sort of stuff. Then you got the game. But you also have... A, uh... The way that it came... Cold Steel 2 did not come with it, as that was a separate purchase. What came was this dude right here. It was a little pen for the uh, Erebonian Empire. And, uh, unfortunately, um, it was designed to be the exact same size as the game, so that this was designed to hold both one and two and the art book, and then you were just supposed to take this out and do with it what you will. This one in particular, um, I actually do have it out and about somewhere else, but... <laughs> I also decided that I was going to get the PS3 version, and uh, same difference, there's no cages for these, uh, but yeah, there you go, there you go, and uh, there's Trails of Cold Steel 2, basically have the same kind of thing going on, this has kind of a reverse artwork, uh, I believe both of them do, <laughs> the disc from this is still actually my PS3, that's fun. But, yeah, there you go. There's a nice shot of the reverse there for that one. Yeah. There you go. Actually get that in <laughs> decent view. Uh, both of them, luckily, the uh, standard editions also kind of came with, uh, you know, an actual manual. Huh, imagine that. Neat stuff. But, what I can say is that I still have the, uh, the PS3 one of these pens in the box. So, get ready for a mind-blowing experience. <laughs> there it is. It's pretty small. Wouldn't really expect anything super large, but, you know, the box is quite large. <laughs> so, yeah. These two sets are basically the same, except for, you know, that line up top there. Um, the back side's basically the same. It will change, because obviously the Vita doesn't have Blu-ray, does it? That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> oh. Okay. So, we got that stuff out of the way. But that's not where it ends. Next up, I purchased it on the PC, which is where I basically played... Mmm... I played a little bit of it on the PC. The ports are fantastic, but I mostly played those two on the Vita. But, a little while ago, uh, Xseed decided to come out with uh, these other editions on the PS4, because they wanted to kind of get in on that because Cold Steel 3 was released on the PS4 initially exclusively but it's also uh, come to the PC which is where I played it and the Switch which I've recently picked up so they included some extras so let's go ahead and uh, just take a look at these huh? got my handy dandy little winger nail file Oh, you can see that one is creased. That makes me sad. Oh, well. <laughs> now then, there's a coin. You get uh, a nice, shiny uh, metal case for it. Hey, you still get the instruction manual. Neat. And you get the images of basically all of the original Class 7 there on the back end. Well, the Mishishi plush, apparently. It's probably Laura's. I don't know. <laughs> That's my best guess. 
But it also comes with this uh, 50 Miracle in, which is actually pretty cool. Um, if you're aware of the uh, storyline of how kind of the game starts out. Uh, this also has a, kind of a weird thing to do, but you can open up the bottom and get access to a little soundtrack CD. Little musical selections. Uh, I believe it's got like four tracks on it or something like that. Yeah, apparently made in Mexico. Neat. Uh, I haven't opened these guys because I actually own the full soundtrack. So it's a little bit of a waste for me to open that. I really wouldn't uh, use it for a whole lot. And just like I did with the previous one, here's Trails of Cold Steel Part 2. And this is the Relentless Edition. These guys did come a little scrunched up from Amazon because they didn't really do the best job of shipping them. They're not in the worst condition ever. You know, it wasn't something where I'm like, no, take it back, I don't want it. But, they were a little banged up. Okay. So, this guy's got uh, another cover. That's got Crow there. And, you know, you with the tower there. As well as uh, the inside artwork with... Let's see, you got Laura and Fee and Machias and Eustace and Rain and... Lisa and Emma. I think I see Elliot back there. I think in that little area there, that's Gaius. Yeah, not quite all of them, but, you know, quite a few members of Class 7. And you get the instruction manual as well, which I appreciate. Oh, yeah, these also had, like, little comics on the back. Uh, both of them did. They were kind of... Elisa going crazy and whatnot. They're pretty amusing and kind of exclusive to the manual. This guy also came with a pen. And by looking at it with the snake biting itself, uh, I'm assuming that this is Ouroboros or Ouroboros, however you really want to pronounce it. They pronounce it Ouroboros in the English translation, so whatever. Which, you know, it's Bad evil organization. Uh, and yeah, it's also got some uh, cards here. Apparently. I honestly don't fully understand exactly what these were supposed to be. Because basically none of them are relevant to the 80,000 characters that actually exist in the game. But this also came with a uh, musical selections. This one I did open. You get a lot more than I thought. There's 23 tracks here. Still pretty far off from the um, close to 100 that the, uh, the game has for the full soundtrack. But yeah. That's some pretty sweet stuff. What I am fearing a little bit is the fact that uh, these haven't come out on the Switch yet. But it makes sense for them to do so. Because 3 is released for it. People are going to want that. You know. Because if you just jump into there going like, oh neat. Then you're going to be super lost. Whereas if you play 1 and 2 of this... You're going to be slightly less lost. <laughs> and then if you uh, played through all the trails in the sky and, uh, and the crossbell arc, then you'll probably understand exactly what's going on. But that's well over a thousand hours worth of game, and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> but I'll figure things out eventually. Um, yeah, it's uh, some... Super neat stuff. Uh, 
randomly because this is um, sitting right here in front of my face. Uh, there was an anime for The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. This covered kind of parts of the first game. There's uh, Estelle and Joshua. That's, that's, that's their names. Yeah. Got this on Blu-ray. I know the case is around somewhere, but right now it's just sitting on top of some, uh, some other Vita games that I have sitting next to me. But yeah, it was a lot of fun taking a part of uh, the same game. <laughs> like three different variants and probably seen it before because it really wouldn't make sense for Xseed not to eventually attempt to put these on uh, the Switch. Because they've already put other games on the Switch. And they already own the rights to 1 and 2. I don't own the rights to uh, 3 and above because that all got passed on to NIS America. And it... I guess it kind of makes sense. Like, uh... From the way I understood it, the people who were there that actually cared a lot and enjoyed the Falcom games either left and or got fired from Xseed so the, a lot of the rest of the people there didn't really have the same passion so it being handed over to NIS America kind of made sense to me um, obviously they had a bit of a rocky start with uh, East 8 with the original translation but they've, they've got all that stuff figured out uh, they retranslated that and they did a fantastic job with Trails of Cold Steel 3. And hopefully 4 is awesome as well. That should be coming out in a couple of months, at least on the PS4. And then, you know, later elsewhere. And, yeah, I think that's about all I have to say about it. They're fantastic games. They take a long time to get through. Especially if you want to absorb all the world building and the extra dialogue and everything. They can take probably about 100 hours of peace. Or more. Or a lot more if you want to do all the trophies. I don't generally understand a lot of the platinum trophies on RPGs. Because they always have these arbitrary ones. Like, oh, you got to sniff all 50 buttercups throughout the world. And <laughs> shit that I, I just can't be bothered to care about. Like, I'm one trophy away from uh, platinuming Persona 4 Golden. Uh, but the last one is having the, uh, the announcer lady, Risa... Uh, say absolutely everything that she can say and that means that I would have to do a couple of different difficulties and use a lot of characters that I don't usually use so that I can get her to say all that and it's just not worth my time it was fantastic I really enjoyed the game I even picked it up on PC but I haven't really felt the need to uh, replay through it just yet but uh, yeah it's just not worth it I'm, I'm not really a trophy hunter uh, at all I enjoy getting a lot of the, the stuff that's, you know, impertinent to the story, like getting all the uh, getting all the treasures and all the items and whatnot. Uh, any extra bosses, that's all great. But all the extra just metagame stuff that a lot of uh, trophies do, not for me. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling, and uh, y'all enjoy the rest of your day, yo.